In this video we're going to cover all the content from the AQA specification on using radiation. We'll look at half-life, contamination, irradiation and some typical uses of radiation. That's everything you need to know in five minutes. <music> We've already said that nuclear decay is completely random and there's no way of knowing when a particular unstable nucleus will emit radiation. However, the really cool thing about radiation is that we do know exactly how long it will take for half of the unstable nuclei in a sample to decay and this is called the half-life. It's also the time it takes for the activity of the sample, the amount of radiation given out per second to half. So if I have a piece of radioactive material, let's say it has 32 unstable atoms in it, after a certain amount of time, for example three years, half of them will have decayed. After another three years, then half of the ones that are left will have decayed too. So we've gone from 32 to 16 to 8. It's gone down by half every three years. So its half-life is three years. In an exam, you might be asked to find the half-life from a graph. You look at what number you're starting at, in this case 300, and go down by half. Draw a dotted line across to the curve and down to the x-axis and read the time. In this case, the half-life is two years. On a higher tier paper, you might be asked to calculate the decline after a certain number of half-lives and express this as a ratio. For example, if the half-life of a substance is six years, what is the net decline after 18 years? Well, we can take this a half-life at a time. So at the start, zero years, we have the full amount, or one. After six years, one half-life, it's gone down by half. After another six years, so 12 years in total, two half-lives, it's gone down by half again, so we have a quarter left. After three half-lives, another six years, 18 years in total, it's gone down by half again, so we have an eighth left. So after 18 years, we have an eighth left. It has declined by seven eighths. Radioactive contamination is when there is unwanted radioactive material on another material. For example, if a scientist has been handling radioactive substances, then there may have been some of this rubbed off onto their suit or clothes. We say the suit is contaminated. This is a problem, because as long as the radioactive material is on the suit, then the suit is dangerous. Radiation is hazardous to people as it mutates and even kills living cells. Contaminated materials have to be handled and disposed of carefully. Irradiation is the process of exposing an object to nuclear radiation with the purpose of killing living organisms that are on the object. For example, medical equipment that is sealed in its packaging can be irradiated to sterilise it and kill any bacteria that may be on it. This is done by exposing the object to gamma radiation which passes through the packaging and kills any living organisms on the syringe. Radiation is also used to kill microorganisms on food and make it last longer. The process of radiation does not make the object itself radioactive, but it can be dangerous to be nearby when the process of irradiation is happening and safety precautions must be taken, such as protective clothing or keeping a safe distance away. In an exam, you might be asked about which type of radiation might be used in a particular situation and why. Here are three common examples. First of all, smoke alarms. Inside smoke alarms are circuits with a gap. Alpha particles emitted from a nearby source ionise the air. In other words, knock the electrons out of the air particles. These electrons then flow across the gap, completing the circuit. If smoke enters the alarm, the alpha particles are stopped. So they don't ionise the air and there's no flow of electrons. A sensor in the circuit detects that there is no longer a current and sounds an alarm. Alpha particles are used because they are stopped by smoke. They are highly ionising and they can't pass through skin, so are less hazardous to have in our homes. We would use a source with a long half-life, so the alarm keeps working over a longer time without needing to be replaced. We can use radiation to check the thickness of a metal that's being made. Radiation is placed on one side of the sheet of metal as it's being rolled out, and a detector is placed on the other side. If the metal gets too thick, less radiation is detected, so a computer tells the rollers to close together and roll the material thinner. 
beta is used as alpha would be completely stopped all the time and gamma would not be affected at all no matter what thickness. We would use a source with a long half-life so that the activity stays high and so we know any change is due to the thickness of the material and not the activity of the source declining. Finally, radiation can be used as a tracer. This means it is put inside a liquid that flows, for example water in pipes underground. If there is a leak, then the contaminated water gets into the soil. Then the radiation is detected at the surface and the location of the leak is found. Beta would be used in this case because it would not get through the pipe normally, but it will be detected at the surface if there is a leak. We need a source with a short half-life so that the water does not remain contaminated for a very long time, reducing the risks to people. Thanks for watching, I hope you found it useful. Download a copy of the notes from this video on my website, missbroom.co.uk. Get daily updates and your questions answered on my Instagram and Facebook pages. And to help other people find these videos, please hit like and subscribe.